start building robots that if they disappeared tomorrow, someone, someone out there would feel pain. Automatic Addison. Hi, this is Automatic Addison, and I am in sunny Hilton Head, South Carolina. And welcome to another Tech Talk. Let's get into it. So I'm going to begin with the story. I used to be the CFO, the chief financial officer of the first tech startup accelerator in Latin America. I saw a lot of startups. Some went on to be wild successes, but most, most failed spectacularly. Some burned so hard we were still cleaning up the ashes over a year later. And let me tell you about one. One of the name of the companies was Tribus. They were based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And their big idea, they created an online fruit delivery company. You just went on, they built the website, you went on the website, you selected your fruits, you put it in your cart, and they would deliver it to your door within a week. But the problem is, Brazil is full of fruit. Everywhere you go, there's fruit. You can't walk outside without someone throwing a banana at you or drive down the street without a papaya hitting your windshield. So what exactly were they disrupting? I mean, they worked hard. They worked hard, very hard. They were the first ones in, the last one to leave. They had the cool dashboards, the logistics. They really did believe that an amazing work ethic, but they were solving a problem that didn't exist. So they died. And here's the point as I put on my glasses because it's very bright. Hard work doesn't matter if you're building the wrong thing. And I see this in robotics right now. I see it all the time. I saw it at ICRA a couple weeks ago. People are grinding 16 hour days, burning caffeine like rocket fuel, writing beautiful Python, beautiful C++ that you can put and frame on your wall. But it just ends up as an expensive conversation piece. Because let's be honest, let's be honest. A lot of you are building robots that nobody needs. Nobody needs. Let's talk about Asimo. Another story, Asimo. He was the pride and joy of Honda. He walked, he ran, he waved at presidents. It was decades of engineering and billions of Japanese yen in the making. And now he's sitting in a museum like the statue of David. Why, why? Because Asimo never solved a real problem. He just looked cool doing pretty much nothing. And that's what a lot of y'all are doing. I see it, I see it. I see it when I go into robotics labs. I see you guys spending years and effort building robots that nobody wants. So, so in order to build the future, you need to be relevant, building something that's relevant. Let's talk about another pet peeve of mine, robot dogs, quadrupeds, Boston Dynamics does it, Unitree cloned it, and now they're cheaper than a Sony PlayStation. Why are there so many people creating robot dogs, spending all that time building quadrupeds like they're the chosen ones? Who's asking for another robot dog? Are factory managers pounding on your door saying, uh, please, 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 we need more quadrupeds? No, 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 they're not. These are just luxury toys for the rich who already bought their Tesla and are bored. That's what quadrupeds are for. Stop building robots just because you can. Please, for the love of God, stop. Start building robots that if they disappeared tomorrow, someone, someone out there would feel pain. Business pain, operational pain, financial pain, the kind of pain that hits you in the gut. Because if no one notices your robot's gone, then it was never worth building in the first place. Stop it. This isn't about clout. It's about impact. One last thing. Let me talk about a very important concept in the entrepreneurial world, the concept of vitamins and painkillers. Now, when I was a young kid, very popular was this vitamin called Flintstones vitamins. You may know if you're American, you grew up in the United States, you remember those commercials that used to come on Saturday morning before the cartoons? We are Flintstones kids, 10 million strong and growing. We are Flintstones kids, 10 million strong and growing. So Flintstones vitamins, my mom gave me those. And maybe I took them like for a couple days and then we stopped and then I took them for another couple days 
And then probably after a month, I stopped them altogether. Those are the Flintstones vitamins. And then let's say I got a cut. Let's say I got a cut out of my head, like I did the other day. You may be able to see it. I was, I had the stove, right? I was cooking some food and I'm a, I'm a little bit of a tall guy. And I had the frying pan and I lift my head up, see if I could get the salt and pepper and it bashed right into the ledge that's above the stove. And it created this huge gash Blood was just streaming down my head. And within like 30 minutes, I got this massive headache, this massive headache, the kind of headache that makes you want to just take your head off. You know, you know, those kind of headaches. And so I went and I tried to find the Advil and I found it and I took it. I took a couple and I was good in about 30 minutes or so. So that's a painkiller. And a lot of you guys out here, you guys are building robots that are the Flintstones vitamins, the vitamins. These are the things that are nice to have. These are the things that maybe you can use one day and maybe you don't. Maybe you can just stop taking all together and you're just fine. These are vitamins. There's the other type of robot product like the Kiva robots, those mobile robots that work in Amazon warehouses that move the shelves around or the robotic arms, the industrial robotic manipulators that work in factories, car factories to paint the car or to do welding. Those are the painkillers. And so there's two types of robots in the world. There's the vitamins and there's the painkillers. If you build one of them, it's going to make you go broke. You build another one, it's going to make you wealthy. You, my friend, want to focus on the painkillers. The robots that if we were to decommission that robot tomorrow, make it go away, not exist anymore. Somebody would call you and say, bring that back immediately. So now what I want you to do, here's the call to action. Anytime you are about to build a robot, ask yourself, is this a vitamin or is this the painkiller? Now go out there and build the painkiller. Automatic Addison.